Hello, it's Spence, the evil genius, with your lab secrets tip of the day. Hey, today I'd like to show you my LabZip Developer's Toolkit. This is basically everything I use that helps me to develop responsive solutions. Now, this could be true whether you're working on a theme or a plugin or just working on improving your existing WordPress website. Either way, this is a series of kind of cutting edge stuff that really makes it a no brainer for you, even if you're not a developer, to get things done. Okay, so let's jump in. I've got the browser open now to our LabVids demo site, showing off our new LabVids slider with Meteor slides. And what if I wanted to make some modifications to my responsive site? Uh, well, let's start with the basics. First of all, whenever you're working in responsive designs, you need to see what the actual viewer will see depending on what type of browser window they would be using. For example, if they were on an iPad or an iPhone, it would be a smaller different size layout than if they were on a laptop or even a big desktop. So the number one tool in the toolkit is some way for us to see what would be the view of the user, but without us having to keep dragging the browser window to scale. Now, the number one way to get this done that I found is by using a little tool called Firefox Nightly Builds. Now, this is part of Mozilla's uh, ongoing development of their Firefox plugin, uh, sorry, Firefox browser. And it basically provides you some tools that are really cutting edge. And the number one thing that I like here is the developer's uh, responsive layout tool. So if you go over to Nightly dot mozilla dot org you can download a copy of firefox nightly and you can use that in place of or instead of uh, as well as in addition to any firefox that you're currently using so i went and grabbed one for mac and i installed it and when you do you're going to get an option window that allows you to open up a couple tools and this is under tools web developer and you'll see over here on the left hand side that one of the tools that you've got is called responsive design view. You can also use the shortcut which is on a Macintosh option command M. And when I do it's going to open up a dialogue that let's go back to my other page and open up a dialogue that looks like this. And what it gives me is a window to different viewports. So I can have for example a 320 by 480 viewport or I can click the rotate button and see it that way. I can go to a iPad size which is 768 by 1024 or I can rotate that so it's in landscape mode uh, I can even go full maybe it's desktop 1280 by 600 whatever I want cool thing is I can also go custom so if I wanted to I can grab the window and it'll tell me what the size is so for example in responsive we got a breaking point at 650 pixels wide watch what happens see that I can go right to the point where it breaks and I can scale it make it a little larger even and this way, I can actually test out what things will look like for somebody who's using maybe a tablet that I know has a certain media query size, etc. See how easy that is? And I can turn it on and off. But what's nice is I can also use it in conjunction with a couple other tools. So let's keep going. The second tool that I need to do great responsive development and design or to work on my responsive based website is something to show me what's the color palette. Now, this is something that is included in the developer tools, but I actually like to use a Firefox extension. And the one I've installed over here, you'll notice, is still under my tools. It's called Rainbow. And what I like about Rainbow is, although I have desktop tools to do this, this gives me a couple of things that are really amazing. The first one is the Website Analyzer. If I click on that, all I need to do is wait a moment, and it analyzes the color palette of this page. It tells me exactly the percentages and hexadecimal numbers of all the colors here and I can selectively copy them or I can selectively add them to my library or I could just save the whole kit and caboodle and label them like lab vids etc click save and I'm done and when I do watch what happens I can then go back under my shortcut menu and look at website library and I can sort by the tags that I added and in this case here's the color palette that I just added for lab vids. So if I want to make some modifications in the future, I can always come back to it and pick the hex color. Really simple. If I need to analyze a particular color, they've also got a tool called Inspector. With Inspector, I just roll my mouse over and it gives me the hex color. Could it not be any easier than that? Click on it, it copies it, and then I can go ahead and add it to my library or use it elsewhere. And it even gives me an old school tool, the picker. 
picker is something that you've seen probably before where I can have an entire range and I can pick. Maybe I want to pick this whole range here. Or I can do individually with a little bullseye. And it gives me that as well. And this also gives me RGB values. And that could be handy if I'm working in another program, such as a photo editing program. Now, the next tool, uh, I'm going to reset this. The next tool in my library that I really enjoy using quite frequently is this one here. If I need to know what the style sheet elements uh, are that are going to be changed, or that I need to change, I've previously used my old standby, which is Firebug. A Firebug is something I've used for years, and I still think it's terrific. Firebug provides you just about everything you would ever want to, to use. And it's available here in your toolbar. For example, I can go over here to um, Firebug. I can open it either in the window or in a standalone window. Go into the mode of HTML. Now, Firebug, you've seen me use before. This allows me to go ahead and right click, inspect with Firebug, and gets me right to the spot I need to. If I want to figure out, for example, the H2 class, Maybe I want to see what the size of the font is, and I say, eh, I want it bigger. Okay, so I'm going to go to two. I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to make it four, five, six. Okay, a little silly. Firebug by itself continues to work, but they've included a new one in here, which I think has some merit. So if I, again, go to my tools or use the shortcut under Web Developer, I'm going to look under the new Inspect. Now, this is kind of neat because it has two modes and a couple features. First of all, in the native mode, you see how it's automatically highlighting the various elements of the page. And in many ways, this is almost better than how Firebug does it. You really can't miss. Literally get down to the granular level. And when you find something you want to modify, like that H2 again, you click on it and it gives you some cool options. First of all, the rules themselves are on the right side. So just like I did before, I can go ahead and modify the font size. Maybe I want to make that 2, 2 EM, right? Just like I did. But it also gives you the ability to see the pseudos, like maybe the hover state or the active state or the focus. I can also click over here and I can select the parent or the thing above. Now, what's nice about all this is that this tool can be used in conjunction with Firebug or it can be used by itself. But either way, it just gives you an extra bit of knowledge about what's happening on your page. And if I go ahead and click the short code again, I can reselect and do other things. But I'm going to back out of this for a second because next I want to show you part of that, a new tool that I really like. Let's say you're having trouble because one of the layers of your design is interfering with another. This happens frequently when you have drop down menus. It's a thing called a Z index. And in some cases, you might have it where the drop down menu is overlapping something and you can't get to where you needed to because of the overlap. Well, if you needed to adjust it, it would be much easier if you could see that in three dimensions, right? So why don't we try that out? One of the new tools in here under Web Developer, if I go into Inspect, I click on, let's turn off style, click on this neat little button called 3D View. This is something that I haven't seen ever before, but I think it's just fantastic. I can manipulate this entire page in 3D, and I can zoom in and see how all the layers are interacting. So, for example, I used this the other day, and I discovered that something was just bouncing out the edge of the page, and I didn't know why. This is not something you might use right off the bat, but once you start to get a feeling for how the document object model is laid out, this could be very handy. For example, I see here that this particular layer has something below it, and it's all laying on top of this layer here. And if, for example, the indexing was off, maybe the bottom layer is above the thing I really wanted to get to, and I can make an adjustment accordingly. I'm not going to go into detail with this introduction on how this works, but I do think this is very creative and some kind of tool that there's going to be a use for whenever you're stuck with a problem. Okay, we turn that off and let's get out of that. Let me show you a couple other tools real quick. Uh, if I go over here to Web Developer, one of the other things that happens quite a bit is that you're going to be working on your actual code and you feel like you want to make some significant changes. Well, in the past with Firebug, that meant you had to copy and paste it to the real style sheet. It's kind of a pain. What if we had an ability to work on the style sheet, save it, and then later integrate the whole thing when we're done? Well, we can do that here with Inspector. So basically, if we go over here, Style Editor is an option that gives you all of the style sheets that it finds within this particular page. What's nice about it is if you know the names of your styles or you do a little digging, you can find the one that may affect 
the things you want to change quite easily. So in this case, if I were to scroll through here, I could see that I've got an inline style sheet. And this inline style sheet is actually part of a plugin that works on the slider. So this is the one that if, for example, I wanted to modify some of the slider things here, I could work on. Right? So let's try it. Remember we were talking about the featured subtitle. Well, actually, let's see if I can make it so you can see this better. Let's try it like that. We were trying to change that featured subtitle. Grab this handle. There we go. Let's change that a little bit. Remember, so it was right over here. I go ahead and modify that. Make it 3.0. Do you see how this is modifying it in real time? Watch it again. I'll make it two pixels. Make it one EM, sorry. I've never seen anything more handy than this. This is like live design, changing the style sheet as you go. The best part about it though, is when I'm done, there's a save button here, which means that I can save these modifications on my desktop and then simply copy and paste it to the real plugin or the real website when I'm finished. Incredibly easy and powerful because I don't have to do all that other copying and pasting. If I gonna go ahead and work on some images, Sometimes it's a pain because basically, although I can use an inline image editor or something on my desktop, they're not really integrated well. Well, now that's changed a bit because now there's some tools in here that integrate the imagery pretty well. If I went over to Web Developer and I looked over here, I have a couple tools here that'll let me do some stuff. One of them I like is called Pixlr Grabber. Now this is actually, again, an extension that you add to Firefox, but it's got a couple options and it pretty much replaces, in many cases, using a screen grab program as well as Photoshop. So if I go over here on Pixlr Grabber, I can, for example, grab the entire page or a defined part of the page or just the visible part. That'd be useful for making screenshots, for example, um, that I wanna use later. So if I click grab visible part, I just go ahead and it made it right there. Now I can go ahead and edit it inside of the online editor. And what's neat here is maybe I wanna put some text on top, right? So I just click on the text editor and say, cool shot of lab vids. Maybe I want to make that red. Click OK. Maybe I want to make it a little bold. Change the font, etc. Whatever the case may be, this has almost all the same features you're going to find in any high-end Photoshop, at least insofar as you're going to use for web purposes. When I'm all done, I can go ahead and save this locally, or I can even post it up to a Pixlr account. Either way, though, the nice thing is I haven't had to leave and open up another desktop application. The other part that I like about Pixlr, if I close this for a second, is that while I'm working on it, I can actually go ahead and manipulate other images. So let me go back over here to bookmarks, sorry, tools, Pixlr. Um, this is called Pixlr Express. This allows me to grab an image that I may have created before and I can do some fun stuff with it. I can also grab an online image and do some fun stuff with it, even a webcam. Let me show you collage though. Collage lets me build a grid that's maybe useful if I'm doing a product demo or I wanna show some screenshots to a partner in business. The idea is you can select a layout. So I'll stick with the simple one, the four. All right, and now you just click and add an image. So for example, maybe I'm gonna add an image here, add an image here, add an image here. It's a weird one. One more. I've got a grid and I can go ahead and adjust the roundness or the proportions, do different things with it. But when I'm all done, I can save this image and I can upload it or manipulate it. I can add effects to it. Maybe I want to make some creative Partridge Family style. Whatever the case is, you can see there's almost an endless amount of uh, possibilities, all of which without leaving my browser or leaving the site that I'm working on. So gives me the ability as a developer and somebody trying to build a product to do almost everything I need to change my product, change my layout, do the design, and yet not have to open anything other than my Firefox nightly browser. Super simple. Well, this tutorial went a little longer than I expected, but hopefully I've given you some inspiration and a little bit of excitement on what kind of stuff you can do now to build your own responsive design uh, website and to maintain it and create your product as well. This is Spence, the evil genius. We'll see you next time.